Hey, sorry for the delay. We had a huge group this morning. Hey, don't worry, Coach. I got your ass for some yeah. penalty runs <laughs> right after this one. Hit the ground. It's time for some pencil rolls. <laughs> All right, uh, Coach, morning, what, what's going on, Coach? What's up, man? Great to talk to you. Always a pleasure to talk to uh, my favorite coach that I ever played for at LSU. What's the emphasis in between regular season and bowl season in your department, Coach? Uh, so, uh, for the guys that are injured, uh, we, we rested them some. Uh, did a bunch of rehab on those guys, a little different programming. But for the healthy guys and the guys that haven't played a lot, uh, we've been hitting it pretty hard. Uh, Heavy lifting, some good speed work, uh, a little bit of fitness training, and it's gone very, very, very well. We had three incredible training days uh, uh, this week, and uh, it's dead period. And then we'll start uh, finals next week, and we'll get the guys in uh, between you know study time and finals and knock out some more training, and then they'll have a little break before uh, bowl practice. So it's it's all about recovery for the guys that need that and then continuing to develop uh, as much strength and power as possible for the healthy guys. And, and I guess I, I kind of got a two parter here. How, how much better, how much improvement do you think can be had in this relatively small window? And then how do you oh. kind of measure that improvement? Yeah. So uh, that's a great question. So you can do a lot for the guys that are healthy. Uh, and then the guys that, you know, are banged up a little bit, you can, you can really, you know, if they recover well and, and get in the training room and do all of the rehab, um, you can actually see some big improvements in those guys as well. And then we've gotten some guys that have been banked up, uh, you know, the latter part of the season. We've gotten them healthier, and uh, we're coming off of some of those injuries. Now, as far as measuring it, um, we've got uh, – we've had this device, and it's really been great. Uh, it's it's a force plate where the guys every time we train we jump on it and um, T Bob you would love it uh, it gives us 175 different metrics uh, anywhere from strength to speed to power that it measures every time we train we've tracked our guys we've probably jumped our football team uh, it's well over 2,500 jumps now uh this uh season so we we track that's how we track it now um and it's been phenomenal we've seen some really good improvements and then we did dexa scans uh which is a, a form of measuring their body fat and bone density and if take a guy like um uh, lloyd cushionberry so this season lloyd played in every game and lloyd put on 10 pounds of lean muscle wow. in season and so by monitoring their jumps, we're able to program more accurately. Uh, and through the DEXA scan, which is a, is a, uh, probably more accurate than any form of uh, body fat measuring except for underwater measuring, uh, it's very, very uh, impressive to see a guy like Lloyd gain 10 pounds of lean muscle in season. So, yeah. And it's good that Lloyd's been healthy. So things have gone well. Yeah, Lloyd, I mean, he's been one of the breakout players this year. I yeah. wanna, dude, I want to come get in and get measured on that jump platform, yeah. see where my explosiveness yeah. is out yeah. as I come on. run down to 30 here. Talking to Coach <laughs> Tommy Moffitt here on Off the Bench, 104.5, 100.3, 94.7 ESPN. Um, coach, the game last week, as brutal, brutal of a loss as uh, I've ever witnessed, what has been the message to the team? Because it's weird, like – yeah, the team goes through film, but if I'm remembering correctly, like you're not spending any real time with your position coaches or other coaches right. here. They're out recruiting, so like you're right. kind of the immediate guy that the team's yeah. dealing with. What's been your goal in helping this team kind of process it and move on? Yeah, so the first thing was is to uh, the coaches, they actually graded the film, and the players came in. We had a team meeting on Monday night, and they received their grades. Um, and you know, the most important thing is we got to execute better. And that's been my message to them. Uh, number one, we have to execute better, take out all the stuff, all the, uh, I guess minutia, I'm going to say it boils down to, you know, there were a lot of opportunities in the game where we could have put them away, uh, minus all the other stuff, yeah. you know, and we, and we didn't, uh, but my primary message is now you got to move on because there's nothing that we're going to do 
no matter how many times you look at the film, no matter how many times you practice, we're not going to change the outcome of that game. And the thing that we have to focus on is the next game. And we're going to play another game, and we have to work hard, train hard, practice hard, run hard, and get ready to play the next game. And that's been our focus. Once we got over that initial, uh, once we got over the initial uh, loss, you know, the pain and, and all of that. Like on Tuesday was our first workout, and T. Bob, it was phenomenal mm. because these guys have been that way all year long, man. They've, you know, they've worked hard, and and that's the reason why we won nine games. It's and it's not easy to win nine games in our division when you look at our strength of schedule. And you look how young we are. It's yeah. been, it's been a phenomenal effort by these guys, and they've put it behind them. I mean, you still hear guys bring stuff up, you know, and say a little bit here and there. But our focus is on the next game, and we're going to play somewhere. And and you know, it doesn't matter who we play, when we play, or where we play. We got to show up and play. And um, and our message has also been somewhere there's somebody working to beat you. And it doesn't matter what level of football you play on. It doesn't matter uh, your role on our team. Somewhere, somebody is trained to beat you. And you've got to get up today and do all that you can do to be the best that you can possibly be. And that's irregardless of what your role is. And the critical mass of our team has got to get better. And if we do that, if we continue to do that for the rest of this month, then we're going to be successful no matter where we go. And yeah, that's that's what it, it, it's a weird situation where generally after a loss like that, you like to have a game the next week so you can kind right. of have something to focus on. You can wash that yeah. taste. They're gonna yeah, have to live with this mind, feeling, yeah. yeah. But yeah. but 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 like you said, you can turn it into motivation. Yeah. And right. so so, what's your opinion of the leadership of this team? I've been impressed all year, kind of outside yeah. looking in. Where does it rank? You you've seen a it, lot of great LSU teams yeah. come through. You know, T. Bob, it's it's been phenomenal. And when you talk to guys. When you talk to guys like Mike Divinity and, and Lloyd Cushenberry and guys that aren't seniors, uh, and our senior leadership has been very good, but when you talk to guys like Jer Joe Burrow and and Clyde Edwards Hilaire and uh Leonard Fournette and Dee Anderson and Stefan Sullivan and all of the other guys on the squad, Glenn Logan, all the young guys, when you talk to them, they'll tell you this is the best team that they've ever played for as far as leadership goes and then when you sit in the locker room before games and after games and you hear guys like Devin White talk to their teammates and and like Garrett Brumfield yesterday after our workout you know I'm talking about guys make sure you're in your books make sure this is the last opportunity you got to study before finals etc when I'm done uh, Garrett Brumfield spends five minutes talking to the group about how important it is that they do what I just said. Mm. And, you know, so it, it's, it covers every gamut from eating right, getting your butts in bed, lifting, running, and academics. It's been phenomenal, and that's another reason why we've been so successful. Um, single biggest area of improvement that you see, Coach, going in the offseason, kind of look, and I know I'm asking you to look forward almost past the bowl game here, but going into next year, what do you think the single biggest area of improvement for the program is? Well, you know, it's going to be the same thing it's always been, and that's getting bigger, stronger, and faster. I mean, you know, we'll spend so when we come back from the bowl game, and it doesn't matter what bowl game we go to, the players are not – we're not going to start. We can't start until the Tuesday after Martin Luther King Day. So, um you know, we'll uh, we'll start then, and it's you know evaluating our injury status. Uh, you know, starting building a base of hypertrophy, which is higher reps, lightweight. The same thing, man. Take it through uh, off-season running program and trying to put the very best product that we can on the field. And it's never changing. It's always going to be the same. We've got to you know we've got to get bigger, stronger, and faster. You and that's that's. That's the, the direction that, you know, the program is headed. You blew people's mind two years ago when you came on this program and told people that Leonard Fournette ran 22 miles an hour in the open field. He did that again last yeah. year in the pros and was the fastest yeah. guy clocked. What were some so, of the impressive testing numbers right, for you this year? All right. So, we, so Michael Divinity hit 21.3. Yeah. On the scoop on and the, score? Yeah, on the scoop and score. Wow. He was flying. Um, 
So the most impressive person this summer is Racy McMath. And Racy McMath has been over 23 miles per hour twice. And Racy is on kickoff. And so, you know, the guy's kicking the ball out of the end zone every time. So, you know, our fans need to watch Racy McMath. Wow. But seven weeks in a row, Racy has been over 22 miles per hour. And twice out of those seven weeks, he's been 23 miles per hour. My. He is flying. They got to find and, a way to um, get him get him on the yeah, field. Yes, and we and he's kind of built like Leonard, right? I mean, he's a big old dude. Uh, he's tall. He's taller than Leonard. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's taller than Leonard. He can fly, and so that's that's one guy you know that's really been impressive. But uh, we've had uh, there's been weeks where guys like Todd Harris. And, and of course, uh, 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 Kerry Vincent, you know, who flies up and down the field. So we've got some really, really fast guys coming back. Uh, and it's going to be really neat to see uh, this team next year. I mean, and of course, we got another game and we've, we're doing a great job on the recruiting trails right now. And, uh, you know, we're just going to reload. Coach, thanks for the time as always this morning. Get him in shape as, uh, and keep him fighting. All right, guys. Thanks for having me on. Yes, All sir. Right, Coach. There he is, Coach Tommy Moffat.